Never, ever mess with the alphabet boys. Oh, you thought that was only for mobsters and gangsters? No, 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 that's for white collar folks too. Fraud is a favorite of the SEC and the FBI as you've seen in billions, right? The FBI are the guys who have that wiretap on Chuck Rhodes Sr. and Jr. right now. And the other group of the government you never wanna get in trouble with is the IRS. That's actually where a lot of gangster rappers get in trouble. They don't teach enough accounting on the streets. But in this video, we are gonna talk about a hedge fund that just got in trouble with the IRS. They have been some bad, bad billionaires. And honestly, this whole thing could be used as a nice little side story arc for Ax and the crew. I wanna see it next season in billions and it'll be a great time to let our guy Ari Spiros really shine he's hilarious I love him but the fund we're about to talk about is the same hedge fund I mentioned in that previous video about wags and the hedge fund fees the 2 and 20 video if you don't know what I'm talking about I'll link to that video right here but yes this hedge fund is Jim Simmons and Renaissance Technologies one of the most successful hedge funds in the world and actually one of the most successful hedge funds ever remember I talked about in this video they've been around since 94 it's estimated that his hedge fund returned on average almost 70 72% between 1994 and 2014. And the fund's worst performance was between 2001 and 2013 with just a 21% gain. And actually one of our guys in the fallible community, whose name I'm not gonna try and pronounce for fear of just butchering it and insulting him or her. So I'm just gonna say NQ right here said how Renaissance Technology's 71% return is only for its medallion fund, which is its leading fund. It manages between nine and 10 billion, mostly for its employees. So his other fund performances at tech are not as good and not as good what i read is like 40 percent. so still amazing but yeah it's not 70 percent. so thank you for that nq but can you believe these are the guys trying to pull one over on the irs i guess you can because they are really the smartest and renaissance technologies they're a quant firm so the way they do their strategies is kind of like taylor and billions they're similar where you have a bunch of strategies going on at once like thousands i think and they find little edges in the market and they keep exploiting it until it runs out and they do this over and over again and they have algorithms finding new strategies all the time. But these are the guys who are doing stuff like making 1% a day every day. And they're all PhD, super smart math people like Taylor. And I'm actually gonna explain more about what Taylor does and why they need such a high AUM. So if you wanna see that video, subscribe. So the scheme that Rentech was pulling off was making short-term capital gains look like long-term capital gains, which if you're able to do that, that adds up to a ton of money. So you could imagine why the IRS is pissed. And also I gotta say thanks to Rohan for sharing this article. This was very surprising. I didn't even know about it, but he put it down here in these comments. I appreciate it. I love comments. Okay, but to understand the scheme that's going on here, first you got to understand the difference between short term and long term capital gain. So, investing, just like anything else that makes money, you know the government is going to want a piece of it. So, on all your trades, all your investments, you got to pay taxes. I mean, unless you're in a specific retirement account, but yes, normally taxes. But there's different tax rates depending on if you held some stocks for a shorter period of time or a longer period of time. Hence the long-term versus short-term capital gains tax. So long-term capital gains, as you can see here, applies to investments held for more than one year. So one year is the cutoff point. Short-term capital gains results from an asset owned for a year or less. So you're basically benefiting if you hold a security for more than a year. You get a lower tax rate. Because the tax on long-term capital gains is almost always less than if the same asset were sold and the gain were realized quickly. So usually how it works out, the long-term capital gains tax Tax is much better. So a lot of people try to hold their investments for over a year so they could be taxed at that rate. So with the long-term capital gains tax, it will either be taxed at zero, 15%, or 20%. And it depends how much you make. So if you make between $39,000 and $434,000 a year, you're getting taxed at 15%. Above $434,000 a year, you're at the 20% rate. Now, short-term capital gains, those are taxed just like ordinary income. So those things get taxed just like the check you receive from your company. It sucks. So any income you receive for investment investments you held less than a year must be included in your taxable income for that year. And hopefully your eyes aren't rolling to the back of your head as I talk about taxes. That's usually what happens to me, but this is interesting. Don't worry, we're not getting too deep into tax law. So say you have $80,000 in taxable income from a salary, and then you sold some stocks and stuff and earned $5,000, but they're all short-term gain. Your total taxable income for that year would be 
dollars so with the short-term gains you have different tax rates that just match you know with the regular tax rate so right here in the middle if you're making between 39,000 and 82,000 you get taxed at 22 percent which is already higher than this long-term rate at 20 percent and this thing doesn't just stop at 22 percent it goes as high as 37 percent just like ordinary income taxes again it sucks taxes man is uncle sam just putting a knife in your stomach and just Roiling it around, having your coins and shit just pop out like Sonic the Hedgehog. It's the worst. But at least ordinary income is taxed progressively. So you can sleep easy knowing that. Not really. So say we use the same example. Got $80,000, made $5,000 in trading. Total taxable income is $85,000. Well, because it's taxed progressively, this is how it works. So if you assume you're single, you'd be in the 22% tax bracket because $80,000 falls right here, right? So because the federal tax system is progressive, the actual first $9,700 that you earn that would be taxed at 10%. So right here, all this money between here and here is taxed at 10%. Then all this money between these two levels is taxed at 12% and so on and so forth. Tax law, so interesting. So anyway, by the time you get to this level of income, that's taxed at 22%. But remember, you have that 5,000 gain, right? So your total income is actually 85,000. So the portion up to 82,000 would be taxed at that 22%. But then the remaining 2,800, because this cuts off at 82, right? And then between 82 and 160 is a different rate. So the remaining of that 2800 would be taxed at the 24 percent did you enjoy the tax lesson god i almost fell asleep giving it but if you're in the markets and you're trading investing it's important to know and basically if you can you always want to make your investments long term just for this tax reason if you can if it makes sense but the whole point of this example was to show why renaissance technologies was trying to do this why they were trying to prove that their gains were not short-term capital gains but were long-term capital gains so that they could get taxed at this 20 percent rate instead of this freaking 37 percent rate which is just huge so this tax maneuver saved them billions of dollars because Jim Simmons the guy who started Renaissance Technologies he's a billionaire and guess who one of his partners is Robert Mercer an influential backer of Donald Trump you've probably heard his name recently he was the one who was profiting off this scheme that they had going and if you hear that name Robert Mercer and you feel triggered feel free to go down in the comments and rattle off however you feel about Robert Mercer Trump the Russian investigation whatever the hell is going on right now I mean I'm not gonna read or respond but those comments will help my video get ranked better on YouTube so thank you so a bipartisan Senate panel estimated in 2014 that Medallion Investors, which is one of their funds, underpaid their taxes by some $6.8 billion over more than a decade by making short-term gains as long-term returns. So you know the IRS is pissed. They need to be giving that money to the government so the government can do a bunch of stuff that we don't need and forget about doing the stuff that we do need. That's how taxes work. So Renaissance Technologies, they know they might be in for a little bit of trouble because for the first time they identified this IRS dispute as a potential risk in their annual registration with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Because the IRS, they're not only seeking all that money back, but they're looking for penalties and interest. And that adds up to billions. And as I explained before, Medallion and and Rentech in general earn a lot of their money through short-term trading of securities because they got the algos going trading in and out real fast. And short-term trading needs to be taxed at that salary rate, which we just, just discussed. But these guys are smart. So here's what they did to avoid that. So what they did was those transactions that they were running back and forth, they carried it out with Barclays and Deutsche Bank. So instead of Renaissance Technologies owning those securities directly, Rentech, they had the banks buy and sell them within their portfolios. And then Rentech bought an option from the banks tied to the portfolio's performance. So technically the banks were trading those securities back and forth doing the short-term trading. I mean, it was still Renaissance telling them what to do in a way, but technically the banks. And then Renaissance bought an option in what they were doing. It's like they invested in their little investment fund. And then what they would do is hold that option for more than a year. So when they sold it, they would report those earnings as a long-term capital gain because long-term is if you hold something for over a year, right? So they basically grouped all their little short-term transactions actions together and said we're just buying an option in them so it's long term sneaky real sneaky obviously the irs doesn't play that though so they're arguing that the short-term tax rate should have been applied so it's pursuing back taxes for medallion investors from the 2005 to 2015 tax years 10 years and those years account for at least 30 billion of the 34 billion in profits sheltered by these option trades and the irs is seeking a 20 percent penalty on the underpayments at an amount by itself could reach more than 1 billion so this could be a huge huge hit to the fund not only do they got to pay all those billions in taxes but they got to pay a billion in 
and penalties too. And this is why you always pay your taxes. Get your wealth manager or your tax guy to do it for you, but make sure it's done. This is just a crazy story. They should use it in billions though. Seems right up Axe's alley. But then again, I mean, who really wants a season about taxes? Which is why it should be a side story. Ari Spiros will make it funny. But okay, if you like this video and want more billions content, then check out this playlist I put together. We make a bunch of these videos all the time. It's fun. If you want to see new ones, because we're breaking down every episode, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you get an email notification when they come out. We're also publishing videos like seven days a week. So subscribe and come hang out with us. I'll see you in the next video. Stay foul, Bob. Bye.